Hi kids, this is chapter two, lesson eight. The topic today is how to solve percent problems. Uh, right away though, I have to introduce you to somebody new you've never met before. I'll be right back and I'll get them. Come here, Vandy. Okay. This is my other cat. His name is Ben. Hi, honey. He is much quieter than Frank, but this is Ben. He's a sweetheart. Yes, he's a good boy. They both came from the same shelter. Say hi, Ben. He's not going to say hi. He's kind of quiet. But he's way totally sweet. Goodbye, honey. All right, let's get rid of Ben. And today's hidden treasure, I'm going to give it to you right off the bat, is you should now know my two cats. And if you use their full names, it's a famous person. Who is that famous person? So again, both cats you've met, what's their full name, and come up with the famous person. Okay, uh, today, solving percent problems. Uh, we have a really important vocabulary word today. It's called proportion. Uh, that's how it's spelled. Uh, try saying it a few times. Again, the way you say it is proportion. And a proportion is this. An e a proportion is an equation. An equation that shows two ratios are Equivalent. A proportion is an equation that shows two ratios are equivalent. Um, we've actually been using proportions for quite a while this year. We just haven't called them proportions. Here's an example of a proportion, and it's one that we it was on our chapter one test. Uh, on our chapter one test, there was a problem that talked about a jumping team and how they could jump 36 times in 9 seconds. So 36 jumps. I'll put jumps over here in 9 seconds. And this problem had you figure out how many jumps could that jump team make in 27 seconds. If you remember how to solve this problem, it was all about these arrows, okay? How did we go from nine to get to 27? And that turns out to be times three, and we have to do times three here as well. That is 108, and these are equivalent ratios. This thing right here is a proportion. It is showing that a 36 to 9 ratio is equal to 108 jumps in 27 seconds. Those ratios are equal. So to show a proportion, I'm going to highlight this whole thing. So a proportion is an equation that shows two ratios are equivalent. Here's a ratio, 36 jumps in 9 seconds, and that is equal to a ratio that is 108 jumps in 27 seconds. And what we've talked about before is if you are multiplying by the same number or dividing by the same number, you are going to have equal ratios. So I'm just going to put a box, I'm going to highlight this whole thing, 
a proportion. This thing is a proportion. It's two equal ratios, and what makes them equal are these numbers. You, those numbers have to be the same, either, either multiplying or dividing by the same number. Okay, That's what a proportion is. So we've been using these uh, since early in the year. We have just never called it a proportion yet. Okay. Uh, percent problems. First example we're going to do is, what is 10? 10 is 25% of what number? In lesson uh, 7, we found a percent of a number. Well, now we're trying to find uh, a total amount. 10 is 25% of what number? So this is a total number, and 10 is 25% or a part of that number. So one strategy that you can use to do this is called use uh, double number lines. And on your practice today, the, your book, it will have double number lines when it's wanting you to use double number lines. So you don't have to draw the number lines. But here's what this uh, strategy looks like. You have two number lines, completely one on top of the other. And something like this. So you have two double number lines, and on one number line, you are going to identify percents, and on the other number line, you are going to identify numbers. And an empty or number line that starts over here, I'm going to label percents on this number line. So this is percents, and this would be... Uh, This would be 0%, and a full number line or bar over here would be 100%. So again, these are percents, and I'm going to look at the problem I'm trying to solve. 10% is 25% of what number? This number helps me decide, well, how do I want to count on this number line? Should I count by 50s? Well, I don't want I don't want 50s because I want to have 25 on there. So I could count I couldn't count by tens because that wouldn't hit 25. It'd be right in the middle of uh, 20 and 30. So you have to decide how you want to divide up this full zero to 100. And because this is 25, I'm going to count by 25s. So that would look like this. Right in the middle, you can probably guess what that percent would be. This would be 50%. That would be 25. This would be 75. You can kind of think money, quarters. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. Um, so now I've got my percent, and I'm interested in this right here. 25% because 10 is 25% of what number? So that 10, here I'm going to label numbers. And my number is 10, and that is 25%. So right here, I know that 25% of my number is 10. So these line up, and I get that from right here. 10 is 25% right from my problem. So I know that these line up. 
Now I'm going to make the same marks on this number line. And I want to know what is this total number. 10 is 25% of what number or what is the total? I need the same marks here and now I know that this is a jump of 10. That means this is a jump of 10 and so is this and so is this. So now I can label this number line. This has to be a 20, this has to be a 30, and my total is 40. So 10 is 25% of what number? That number is 40. Double number line strategy. So what you do is you've got two number lines. Label the top number line 0%, 100%. Look at how you want to divide up this according to what your percent is, that's, your, that's a guide. Um, and then you want to copy the same marks, mark, mark, on your number, number line. And the jumps have to be, if this is a jump of 10, so is that, so is that, so is that, and I can figure out the total. All right, another strategy for solving percent problems. Um, this time I'm going to give you a story problem. Here it is. Peyton spent 60% of her money, put dollar sign for money, Peyton spent 60% of her money to buy a TV. If the TV cost $300. How much money did she have? And so this again, how much money did she have? That is, again, her total amount of money. So the problem, let me reread it. Peyton spent 60% of her money to buy a TV. If the TV costs $300, how much money did she have? We're going to use a different strategy, not a double number line, to solve this one. The strategy we're going to use here is called use a percent proportion. Well, I know that a proportion is going to look like this. It's going to be two ratios that are equal to each other. Um, Let's see. Uh, so, when I'm setting up a percent, a percent proportion, I want to do this. I've got a part, and I've got a whole, or a total, and I am going to have a um, a ratio of money and a ratio of a percent. Here's what this problem, how it would translate. So basically, Peyton spent 60% of her money to buy a TV. If the TV cost $300, how much did she have? So she didn't spend all of her money. She spent a part of her money. That number right there that she paid for the TV, that was a part of her total. So this is the part. I know it's the part. What I'm trying to find is how much money did she have? That's her total amount of money. So I would start with a 300 right here. That's the part that she spent. Again, I'm trying to find her total or whole amount of money that she had. She spent 300. 
I'm also going to use a percent for my other ratio. And 60%, translate that to um, a fraction, is going to be 60 out of 100. So the 60 is the part, the 100 is the whole. So over here, I would have 60 out of 100. So this ratio right here is talking about her money, and this one is a percent, the percent ratio. And I want those to be equal. So now that I've got my problem set up, now I just have to think about, well, what is this number right here? How do I get there? 300, and it has to be either multiplying or dividing. I actually am going to go this direction this time. I'm going to make my arrows go this way because I see that this way I would have to be dividing, and this way I'm multiplying. How do we go from 6, if I'm going this direction, how did I go from 60 to get to 300? Well, a shortcut would be cover up a 0 on both of them. How did I go from 6 to get to 30? Look at your multiplication table or divide. If you don't know what that number is, 300 divided by 60 would tell you what 60 multiplied by to get 300. And that number is 5. 60 times 5 would give you $300. Well, I, in order for this to be equal, I've got to do the same thing. So going this way, I also want times 5. Now I can figure out her total. What's 100 times 5? $500. So the total amount of money she started with would be Peyton had $500 total. And she spent 300 of it on that TV, but that's the answer to our question. So let me do some highlighting here. So again, this, you are trying to set up a proportion. So two ratios that are equal. One of your ratios is going to be a percent. The other one is going, depends on what your problem is asking, but it's, you're going to have either a part or a whole. And you're, and you're trying to figure out what are these arrows. They've got to be the same thing, and you have to be either multiplying or dividing. So this is a percent proportion strategy for solving percent problems. And again, I'm just going to kind of have these run together. I'm going to separate these two strategies like this. Uh, today on your practice, if it, if you should be using double number lines, your book is going to give you those double number lines. You just have to build them. Uh, other problems, use a percent proportion. You should have something set up similar to this, a percent ratio and then a ratio according to whatever it is you're solving in your problem. All right, that's it for lesson eight. I'll see you next one.